Hi, this is Dr. Rakesh Sahai. I am Professor of Endocrinology at the Usmania Medical College in Hyderabad. I am going to speak to you about uh, diabetes and the classification systems that we use about di for diabetes. Today, diabetes is becoming a major problem, major burden with the numbers of people with diabetes increasing significantly, particularly in the South Asian region. And uh, we have a huge burden of diabetes. The major burden of diabetes is because of its complications. And uh, therefore, when we uh, need to treat these patients with diabetes, we need to look at preventing the complications. And we need to individualize therapy in all these patients so that we provide them the best treatment in terms of preventing the complications and also uh, probably in terms of preventing diabetes in the future generations in these people. So towards that end, classification that we have been using now, although serving us well for the last uh, 20 years, but what we see is that uh, we have a limitation in that many of our patients with diabetes cannot be correctly classified into <clears throat> any of the types that we know of now, that we know of type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, we speak of DADA, we speak of uh, type 1 and a half diabetes and such categories. And so therefore, many times it is difficult to put a patient into a particular category. Now what we are seeing is that recently there has been a uh, study which has been published from the European region where two cohorts of patients from of diabetics from uh, from Sweden and France were followed up and they looked at several characteristics in deciding uh, their risk for the development of complications and uh, categorized them into five different groups. Uh, there was this group with very severe autoimmunity which is corresponding to type 1 diabetes. Then you have a group which has got a very severe insulin deficiency. This is a group which has a high risk of developing complications like the retinopathy. Then you have a group which is highly uh, significantly having insulin resistance. This group when followed up has shown that they have higher risk of having renal problems be it uh, the new onset of nephropathy or progression to end stage renal disease. You find that it's much more in this group. And then you have two milder forms of diabetes. These are diabetes related to obesity and diabetes related to old age. So if we are using such a classification, what happens is that we are able to upfront identify people who are at risk for the complications of diabetes and address these right from the beginning. We could be less aggressive in those who have say age related diabetes which is when they are particularly old and they are at lesser risk of having complications. We don't have to be very aggressive in them. By being aggressive we may actually put them at a high risk of hypoglycemias. So we could rather focus on the group of patients who have a higher risk, who are younger, who are uh, having severe insulin resistance and have a high risk of developing problems like renal problems. We uh, address these, these issues earlier on and we can prevent uh, such problems in them. And the other group we can look at, uh, uh, similarly we can look at uh, the complications that happen in each of these groups. So this is I think one of the first steps towards precision medicine. We know that we have so much more new information coming nowadays and we are uh, going towards the, the direction of precision medicine which in the next few years I think we will have more clarity on these issues and we will be able to uh, manage our patients much better than what we are doing today. So we look forward to going towards precision medicine. Thank you.